Hello everyone and welcome back to another anatomy tutorial. In this tutorial we are going to talk about the medial muscles of the hip. As you know in the last video we talked about the lateral muscles of the hip and here we'll continue with the medial muscles. And I promise to add some new videos, uh, more detailed videos about the muscles of the hind limb of the horse in the near future. Again, before we start dissection, let's go through the muscles which we are going to dissect in this video, including the quadriceps femoris, highlighted in blue here, the sartorius muscle, the gracilis muscle, the bactinial muscle, adductor magnus muscle, semimembranosus, and finally the semitendinosus muscle. And now let's move to the medial surface of the hind limb of the horse. Here we can see this nerve uh, moves toward the obturator uh, foramen. This is the obturator nerve. Next to it we can see the obturator artery and uh, vein. Cranial to this nerve, we can see this big vein and artery. This is the femoral artery and vein. The femoral artery and vein moves toward the, uh, the hind limb. And uh, next to them, we can see this branch. This nerve, uh, the saphenous nerve, it's a branch from the femoral nerve. In this area, we can see this lymph node. Uh, this is the deep inguinal lymph node. Here, cranial to these structures, we can see the sartorius muscle. If we move the sartorius muscle caudally a little bit like this, we can see the branch which we talked about before, the saphenous nerve, which is a branch of the femoral nerve. This is the femoral nerve which is responsible for the innervation of the foreheads of the quadriceps femoris. The femoral nerve moves through the lacuna musculorum. Uh, to understand what the lacuna musculorum is, let's look at this picture here. I will highlight some muscles uh, here, like the psoas uh, minor muscle. Next to it, a little bit laterally, we have the psoas major muscle, which inserts to the lesser trochanter of the femur bone. Uh, this highlighted muscle is the iliac muscle. Next to them, we can find the femoral nerve, and of course, as we said before, uh, there is a branch from the femoral nerve called the saphenous nerve. And next to this saphenous nerve, as we described before, we can find the femoral artery and femoral vein. Let's zoom in again under the sartorius muscle. If we move it to the side, we can see the femoral nerve and the branch from the femoral nerve, the saphenous nerve, and next to it again, it's very clear here, the femoral artery, and next to it, we have also the femoral vein. Here in this area, we have this structure here called the iliac fascia. It's a very strong fascia. This fascia uh, forms like a small two windows two windows to allow these structures to move through to the hind limbs. The first big one where the muscles move through uh, called the muscular lacuna or lacuna musculorum. Lacuna musculorum, not lacuna matata, okay? While the other one called the vascular lacuna or lacuna vas uh, va vasorum through which the femoral artery and femoral vein move through this window and that's why it's called the vascular lacuna. Here in this area we can see the origin of the femoral nerve originate from the ventral branches of the spinal nerves from the lumbar region. This muscle is the psoas major muscle, this one is the iliac muscle, both of them they form together what's called the iliopsoas muscle. Both of them insert to the lesser trochanter. In this medial view we can see the tensor muscle of the fascia lata, as you can see here. The quadriceps femoris, which has four heads, this is the rectus femoris. 
this is the medial vastus muscle as you can see the medial vastus muscles is fused with the rectus femoris distally on the other side in the lateral view we can find the lateral vastus muscle it's also fused with the rectus uh, femoris all four heads of quadriceps femoris join together and serves to the tibial tuberosity as a middle patellar ligament Here in the medial view, ventral to the pelvic symphysis, we can see this already cut muscle. This is the uh, adductor magnus muscle or greater adductor muscle, originate actually from the tendon of the gracilis muscle. The gracilis muscle takes an aponeurotic origin from the region along the pelvic symphysis. Under the gracilis muscle here, we can see the rest of the adductor magnus muscle or greater adductor muscle, which is located on the medial surface of the femur bone. Caudal to the gracilis muscle, here we can find the semimembranosus muscle. More laterally, we have the semitendinosus muscle. While cranial to the gracilis muscle, there we can find the pectineal muscle, which forms together with the sartorius muscle, this area here called the femoral triangle or the thigh gap, where we can find the femoral artery, femoral vein, and the, the saphenous nerve. On the medial surface, at the level of the knee joint, we can find the medial saphenous vein, which gives two branches here, the cranial and caudal branch. They move down cranial and caudal to the medial malleolus. In this area here, we have under the fascia, as you can see, this is the fascia here. We have to be very careful not to injure this nerve here. This is the tibial nerve. The tibial nerve in this area is embedded inside like fat tissue to protect it, of course. And at the level of the tarsal joint, it gives two big branches. Here we're talking about the plantar branches of the tibial nerve. Distal to the tarsal joint, caudally and superficially, here we can see the tendon of the superficial digital flexor muscle, SDF. And more deeply here, we have the tendon of the deep digital flexor muscle. Medial to it, we have the medial plantar nerve, which is a branch of the tibial nerve. And directly on the metatarsal bone, here we have the middle interosseous muscle there. At the level of the tarsal joint, caudally there, we have uh, what's called the subcutaneous calcaneal borza, located just under the skin, and it's there to protect, of course, the skin at this area. The next uh, synovial borza is located just under the tendon of the superficial digital flexor muscle, here we open the subtendinous calcaneal borza. This borza is very important to allow the tendon of the superficial gluteal muscle to move over the calcaneal tuberosity and to make sure that this tendon is fixed in this area and cannot slide away from the bone. There is a connective tissue called the cap of the superficial digital flexor tendon to fix the tendon laterally and medially to the calcaneal tuberosity. The tendon of the deep digital flexor muscle is protected at the level of the tarsal joint with the tendon sheath. Here we can see the medial collateral ligament of the tarsal joint. And here, this is the medial branch of the cranial tibial tendon or what's called the cranial tendon in the horse. Here it's uh, very important to mention that the best injection area for the tarsal joint is located between the medial malleolus. This is the medial malleolus. This is, as we said before, the medial branch of the cranial tibial tendon. Exactly between them here, dorsally, 
And of course, in this case, we have to protect the media saphenous vein. And as you can see here, the joint is opened. So this is the best injection area of the tarsal joint where we can take samples or inject medication.